My people, my people, my people, what is going on? It's the wealthy guy here and welcome to the My People podcast where we talk with influencers in business, fashion, and lifestyle. I'm your host, the wealthy guy. I'm a men's style expert, custom clothier, and published photographer. This week on episode six of the My People podcast, we are here with... Akeem Sharif. Akeem Sharif. <laughs> and Akeem Sharif, I'm very excited to have him on the podcast today. I'm actually in Philadelphia, in the place where he lives, and I said I must have you on the podcast. Absolutely. So I'm very happy that I was able to make, we were able, able to, to make, make time. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So right now we sitting in a really hot room, <laughs> <laughs> but we going to make it do we what gotta we do. What do. We got to do what we got to do. Exactly. So let me tell you a little bit about Akif Sharif and then I'm going to let him get into it for himself. So Akif Sharif was born and raised in West Africa, Liberia. Uh, he moved to the U.S. when he was a teenager to finish high school and then he went on to college. So Akif has always been into fashion on his third birthday. Listen, y'all better listen to this right here. <laughs> on his third birthday, his dad got him his first made to measure suit. Facts. Uh, Akif's father was one of the most well-dressed men that he has ever known. Uh, he's a man of, he was a man of style. And as a diplomat, 80% of his clothes were bespoke. Yeah. That's a player right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it keeps personal style and knowledge of brands really took off when he started working for Saks Fifth Avenue here in Philadelphia. Akeef currently works at Ralph Lauren in visual presentation and creative services. And he's also the co-founder of Mokeef, a made-to-measure clothing brand. So we're going to definitely have to talk more about yeah, that. Absolutely, Akeef man. Sharif, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes, yes. So, you know, like I was saying, very happy to have you here. Likewise. We, we don't have video today because of the space we're yeah. in, but he is very sharp. Yeah. Very, very sharp. <laughs> um, Akif, tell us who you are. Oh, man. Um, thank you for having me on the show. And uh, you are somebody that I follow since you came into the scene. And I feel like, you know, you're doing something so positive right now, especially for our community and for the young brothers and uh, and sisters, actually, that follow us, you know, right. that look up to us. Right. You know, um, so when you reach out to me, um, I, I was truly honored and, uh, you know, to be, to to accept um, your invitation and uh, and actually, when you told me that, um, you know, I'm going to be in your city, I was like, you know what, I got to do whatever I got to do to make time for you. Um, right. So thank you for having me um, um, on your show. I appreciate it. Good, good, good. So so you've been in Philly for some time, but you're originally from Liberia. Yeah, absolutely. I was born and raised in West Africa, Liberia, um, very small country on the West Coast of Africa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, it was, you know, my, my like my childhood was 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 pretty fun. Yeah. But, you know, my country went through uh, 18 years of, you know, of civil war, you know, and yep. that can really... Uh, play a, a key factor for a kid growing up. So um, throughout my life, it was no stability, you right. know? So, you know, we constantly, uh, you know, had to move, you know, from different country to country in West Africa. Right. Um, until I had an opportunity uh, um, to relocate to the United States when I was 16 years old. Right. Um, to finish high school and, to, uh, you know, to better myself. So, you know, yeah, uh, but Liberia was fun growing up, you know, just the little time we had growing up there. Um, it's a beautiful country, um, you know, um, just um, just being part of a culture um, right. that allow us to. Um, and funny thing, you know, like the way we dress and uh, the things that we say and stuff like that, it has to play a key factor of being, you know, from a beautiful country and right. just, you know, just from a culture standpoint. Right. Right. Um, so for me, going to um, going going to elementary school wearing uniform, but that's something we're going to, you know, we're going to get into right. um, so you can get a sense of idea. Um, how, you know, we, you know, things like that play a key factor on you when you grow up and just, right. you know, and just stick with you. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I, I, I moved to the U.S. when I was 16, um, grew up in a very small county um, out of Philadelphia called Bus County, yep. uh, suburban. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was, you know, that that transition was a little tough for me, you know, right. you know, growing up in the suburb. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, when I first got in high school. Um, I was in 10th grade, yeah. uh, but it was it was it, it was very tough for me, you know, especially a kid coming from Africa. 
Um, you know, kids can be very, you know, uh, you know, can very be very cool. mean. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, comparing to now, like, you know, today generation, you know, it's like it's, it's, it's much better now because of social media right. to change your perception of how people think of African, you know, uh, Africa as a whole. You oh, know? Yeah, for sure. So social media had a, a huge, huge impact on that. Uh, but when we first came in, like the early 2000, right. you know, it was it was very tough for us, you know, but we was able to transition in that just playing sport. Right. You know, so playing sport, making friends and stuff like that and just trying to read, you know, educate kids that, you know, yeah, I'm from Africa, but I'm from the city. You know, right. you know, I grew right. up in a, in a civilized environment, you know, right. but yeah, just just little stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, that's just a little background, uh, you know, uh, of my upbringing. Right. So um, when you like first got here, right, what did you think about the way because I know a lot of times I, I've gotten the opportunity to travel a lot of different places and yeah. people always want to come yeah. to the U.S. Yes. and they always want to come to New yes. York, right? Yes. And it's like their dream. Well, what is it like there? What is it like Absolutely. there? When you first got here, yeah. what did you think about it? Um, it, it, you, you just said something, I mean, you said the key word, you know, everybody want to come to America, you know, right. growing up in Africa and watching movies and stuff like that, you know, the thing that the movie presents to us, yes. everybody have that perception, oh, this is America, right. you know, but forgetting to realize that not, nah, you know, there's a real, you know, part of America that, you know, that's struggling, right. you know, so just that perception. Um, yeah, when I first moved here, uh, I remember my, when, when I got down on JFK, uh, and, uh, it was, it, for me, just to see my mother, because uh, my mother left, you know, came here and right. was able to uh, to uh, to um, to get us in this country. Um, right. So when I saw my mother, you know, that was like that was the most beautiful feeling, you know. Um, and uh, but yeah, it was just it was hard for me to transition because to be honest with you, I wasn't one of those kids that wanted to come here right away right. because you know back home I had everything, you right. know. Um, but it was just the circumstances of like you know mean just re reading a night with my mother and my brothers and sisters, right. you know, but yeah, um, it, it was, you know, like I said, I, I, I didn't grow up in a big city, so it was right. very hard for me, you know, but when I graduated high school, then I started to go to New York, you know, right. then my idea started to expand. Oh, so this is America. Right. And I started to like expose uh, uh, the country, you know, uh, right. the cities and stuff like that, you know, by myself. And I think that's a beautiful feeling. Right. Um, so I have this client and he he's going to a wedding mm -hmm. in in Africa. I think it's in Ethiopia. Okay. But what he said to me was, you know, I have to, you know, be fitted. Yeah. You know, because I, I especially me being from New York yeah. and seeing so many Africans yeah. from all different countries. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I can always say about uh, Africans and African culture is that the clothes yeah, man. The clothes be right yeah, the clothes yeah, be fitted yeah, yeah. it'd be on point yep yeah, yeah absolutely that's a lifestyle back home you know the culture value of what we wear right. um you know it's has a huge impact on on our you know our society you know right. so that's something even when, when my mother was getting married uh you know she has about about five different suitcases right. of just, you know, some of the most beautiful African fabrics. Right. You know, that's just like a traditional thing, you know, right. almost like a diary. You right. know, exactly. You know, so that's something that is, you know, it's it's it's, it's traditional. It's something that we 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 do as African. And you know, so yeah, man. So yeah, we don't play with, you know, when it comes to like dressing up and stuff like that. Right. So when at, at what point would you say that I uh that you wanted to do like uh, be in fashion as a career, as 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 a part, you know, like because a lot of times it's a hobby for yeah, people. Yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They have a good sense of style. Yeah, yeah. They like clothes, yeah. but they don't necessarily want to yeah. work in that particular yeah. thing. And that's how I felt for a long time. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, but what you know, at what point did you say this is kind of what I want to do with my life? Well, yeah, um, uh, that's a beautiful question because to be uh, to be honest, my grandfather was into pharmaceutical. Right? right. So when I was young, um, I would always after school, I would go to one of my grandfather pharmacists and just stay there, do my homework and uh, till my mom picked me up to go home. Right. Um, so as a kid, you know, I, I actually thought that I was going to be in medicine, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. So uh, because of my grandfather, you know, uh, and I was very good at it. Right. Um, but yeah, funny story. So I, I, you know, I would go there and help him, you know, with uh, with uh, the medication dispensing. I knew every milligram to every medicine, right. you know, as a kid um, until he fired me because <laughs> <laughs> because I was still in his medication. Right. Um, but for, for a very good cause, you know, I was I was still in his medication. Um, the, the community that I grew up in, you know, people was less 
less less fortunately, you know, to right. for medicine. So I was stealing my grandfather medication and giving it to the old people and stuff like that. Right. So when he found out, you know, he told my mom, "Yeah, tell your son not to come back here anymore." Right. So that just killed. Yeah, what? exactly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So um, that just killed my uh, my dream of becoming a pharmacist or anything like that. Right. But for me, fashion came to me naturally. Um, I, you know, my you can ask anybody that know me. Um, growing up in Africa, you know, I was one of those guys that, you know, I was always neat. Um, right. and I was so anxious to grow up just because that, uh, I never grew up around like my own crowd. You know, I right. always hang, you know, hang out with my older brothers, my older cousins and stuff like that. Um, and I had a, and that played a, key, a huge, uh, impact on my, on my staff, right. you know, but yeah, I, you know, for, you know, I, I, I started taking it seriously when I moved to this country and, um, and when I pick up my first GQ magazine, you know, in college, you know, right. so and many people tell yeah, that yeah, same yeah, story. yeah, man. But for me, it was different though, just because of you know, I, I mean, you, you're from New York, and you, and you, you pretty much gonna relate to this, uh, uh, Glenn O'Brien. You know, Glenn right. O'Brien was like, you know, like the star guy, you know, at right. that time, you right. know, a, a real New Yorker, you know, old school white guy um, that grew up, you know, with like like that whole Harlem, Brooklyn lifestyle and hang around like an right. African-American and stuff like right. that. So um, I could relate to him, you know, so I would skip everything else and just go right to like this. I mean, like this little article, uh, the star guy, you know, right. just read about, you know, just read about whatever he got going on that that week. Right. Uh, but yeah, but Glenn, you know, Glenn O'Brien played, played a key, I mean, huge key factor in making that transition of right. building my wardrobe, which took a year, you know. Um, right. But anyway, that's something we're gonna jump into. But yeah, uh, I always been part of uh, fashion. Um, that's something that came to me naturally. I was always the guy that was always neat. I was always the guy that you know was you know would iron my clothes before I leave the house. Yep. You know, but just just little stuff like that until people started telling me that you know my cousin. Um, his so rest in peace. You know, he started telling me, "Yo, man, you you really good at this. You know, you right. gotta you know you gotta take this seriously." Da da da, you know. Then when I made that transition, um, work and you know to start working in fashion at Saks Fifth Avenue, and that just you know took my knowledge to a whole different level. Right, and and that's a and 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 for me, you know, uh, it it's a tough one to is and depending on the environment that you grow up in, yeah. it's a tough one as a man. Yeah. Uh, for people to think of you in a fashion yeah, job, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah, they think of uh, yeah, clothes yeah, and things like that yeah, and yeah, looking nice yeah, as yeah, a, yeah. a woman. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? So it's like difficult to not be like stereotyped yeah, or boxed in because this is something that you are like good at and something that you like do professionally. Absolutely. Um, so I want to know, so how would you describe like your like personal style? Um, for me, it's uh, it's definitely because I oftenly say that you know, the word style it's the definition of who you are. Right. You know. Um, you know. Everybody have different way of looking at it. Right. Um, but for me, I feel like you know the word style. It's not just about clothes. It's not just about you know. It's it's a lifestyle. It's yes. who you are. Yeah. You know the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself. You right. know that's you know that's that's, all your style. That, 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 that's you. Yeah. That's who you are. Yeah. Um, and a funny thing, uh, I was out a couple of days ago and uh, with, with with some friends. And we out um, in a club, and uh, I walked to uh, I, I walked from the table to go to the bar to get a rebel. So right. on my way back, mm -hmm. um, you know, this guy just looked at me. He's like, "Yo, man, like, are you in the fashion industry?" I was right. like, "So I started laughing." So I so you know because I, I often may get that question, right. and uh, and I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "No, the reason why I asked you this is because the way you walk is like you're branding yourself. You know, right. it's like you are your own brand." Right. So I was like, "Man, you're a smart man because right. that is right." You know, right. you know when I go out, that's the first thing I have in mind. Right. So to answer that question, um, it's comfortability. You know, I, I just feel like, you know, my style is, is comfortability. You know, if you're comfortable in something, you know, you're going to own it. Yep. You know, you're going to look good in it. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel confident. You know, so for me, I just feel like I my style is comfortability because I feel like I can wear anything, you know. Right. Depending. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to agree with you um, because, you know, I think for some some guys, it's difficult to transition between. A really dressed up look yep. and a really dressed, dressed down, down look, exactly. Right, and especially yeah. on Instagram, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Either your followers are yep. coming to you for that really Red, dressed, dressed up, up look, look, yeah, yeah, and yeah. when you hit them with the yeah, dress yeah, down, yeah, it's like, oh, we don't want to see that exactly. Yeah, that's yep. not what we like. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. all style. Yeah, it's, it's it's who you are. It's, it's yeah. all your style, style yeah. right? Like right now, yeah. I have on a black yeah. t-shirt yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and jeans. Yep. But that's my yes, style. exactly. Yep. You know, every yep. day I'm not gonna yeah, be yeah. in, in a double-breasted suit. But sometimes people don't get that. But I think that you do it. You do it well. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. And, and you just have to find like that balance, you know, um, like because I'm, I'm into the made to measure business. So I'm oftenly posting stuff about suiting and stuff right. like that. Right. Um, but like, you know, on my day off and stuff like that, you know, you would see me in like a hot top sneakers, you right. know. Uh, some joggers, you know, and some, right. and especially during the fall season, you know, and some nice, um, excuse me, some uh, beautiful like wool overcoat, something like that, that right. I can wear and just run, run my errands, you right. know, but, you know, you have to own it. You yeah. know, that's the key. You know, you have to own it. You know, don't just wear it just because, oh, it's a trend. You know, you right. have to own it, you know. So I think, yeah, man, I think style is all about comfortability. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And regardless of what you have yeah. on, if you confident yeah. in yeah. it. That's it. That's all you need. Nobody can tell you anything. That's yeah. all you need. It, it could be a plain that's white tee and some blue jeans. That's it. You know, and, yeah. and, and that'll be it. It's all about the man. And yeah. I think that, you know, for a lot of guys, they don't have the natural inclination yeah. of style. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, you know, that's where you come in and, yeah. and other people come in that can like help them, yeah. you know, uh, with that. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your, your brand in, in your made to measure business. Yeah. So when did you when did you start it? So we we um we started about five years ago, and uh, at that time, a friend of mine, my best friend and my business partner, uh, Mohammed Tunis, uh, you know, we funny thing, we became friends. We from the same country, by the way, right. but we never funny we uh we we never ran into each other at that you know when we was living back home, right? right? So um. We, we became friends because of just dressing up, right. you know, going out and, you know, and I'm seeing him, he's seeing me and uh, he, and he just like, oh yeah, this guy, yeah, I, I, yo, I, I like what you got, man. Right. Like that, right. Right. Just know, just a little compliment and stuff like that. And uh, at that same time, um, he was hanging out in New York a lot. Right. So he knew like that New York, you know, lifestyle and everything. So from somebody from Philly to have like that same you know, level of right. style, you know, and that's how we became friends. But anyway, um, so my time at uh, Saks Fifth Avenue within the fashion industry, I had this beautiful opportunity from one of my mentor right. um, that uh, he reached out to me and said, oh, I found this beautiful manufacturer, um, you know, and uh, I want us to do something, right. you know. And to be honest with you, um, the opportunity came and uh, we... We, we made a lot of mistakes because we wasn't oh, ready. Yeah. You know, oh, we wasn't yeah. ready, but at, at, at the end of the day, the opportunity just came and I just feel like, you know what, we just got to grab Let's this. take it. That's yeah. it, you know, we just got to grab this and just go with it. And right. uh, and and you being in the made to measure business business oh, as well. So trust you, me. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm so, sure yeah. we both can tell Oh, man, some yeah, stories. bro, man. We, we, yeah, we, uh, we, we make, we, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, we, we lost a lot of money. Right. But, you know, but now, you know, we, you know, I can say now, like we we have profession, um, the craft, right. you know, of, right. of, of a made to measure suit, right. you know, and, and I think that's a beautiful thing. But yeah, um, five years ago, one of my mentor, uh, Mr. Anthony Wilson, um, you know, a little bit older, you know, he saw the potential in me. It's like, oh, you know, you're a nice, you know, young man. Um, and I want to introduce you to someone. Right. Um, and uh, so he introduced me to this guy and I had a beautiful manufacturer in Shanghai. Right. Um, so, you know, we, we had our first interview on Skype and, right. uh, and just like that. And I came and told my friends like, hey man, um, I have this beautiful opportunity. I know right now that's, you know, but that's pretty much, it was like the long-term goal right. of having something of our own. Right. You know, we started as a fashion blog, you know, just giving right. idea to like young guys and stuff like right. that. So when this opportunity came, we wasn't ready, anything like that. So we just took it and we learned as we go. Right. You know, now, you know, we, we have getting better, 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 you know, when, uh, uh, through times. But yeah, man, um, so when the opportunity came, we just took advantage of it. And my time at Saks just, you know, helped me 
um, helped me to educate myself on menswear, on you know right. the luxury of menswear, you know how the jacket's supposed to fit, right. you know um, from the shoulder to the waistline, you know just little stuff like that. And I would educate myself every time, you know, right. like seeing brand brands like Brioni, Cuccinelli, you know, right. Isaiah, you know, so I would go home and Google about them and learn about them, right. you know, because I want that same craftsmanship, you know, in in my clothes. And what you do, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that that is that is very true and. Yeah, like even with like because my coat, that idea yeah. was an idea that turned into a business yeah. almost by accident. Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah, man. I, you know, I saw this coat yeah. in my head yeah, yeah, division. that I yeah. wanted yeah. for myself. Yeah. And I'm like, Yeah, nobody can make it. Exactly. Right. So I it was either something from Fendi that yeah. was five thousand yeah. dollars yeah. or something from Zara yeah. Yeah. with yeah. faux fur. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, no, it's, yeah. nothing's quite yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was actually someone else who said, Well, why don't you try to make it? And I yeah. was like, What? What do you mean yeah. make it? Yeah. I just want to buy yeah. it, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, but they gave me information. I started researching yeah. and yeah, and yeah. then it just turned into a business. Yeah. Um but I knew nothing. Yeah, man. Uh, nah, trust me. I I, I, I I can relate, man. And funny thing you said that um, I was in a mark. Uh, I was looking for this beautiful um, English club collar pin bar. Right. Right. Um, Two tone dress right. shirt. Uh, I went everywhere. Nobody making them right. anymore. See, you that's know? how I know you know about yeah. stuff. People don't know about <laughs> the club as, 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 Exactly. You know what I mean? The there you collar. go. You know, a beautiful English about three, uh, 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 about three inches wide. Um, so I look everywhere, man, nobody right. have it, you know? And uh, so when we got into production, that was the first dress shirt. I was like, you know what I'm going to make for myself. Right. And every time I wear that dress shirt, people always give me a compliment. Oh, for you sure. Know? Uh, man, because, you know, a lot of people do two-tone club collar and pin bar, but just a classic, but right. not a club collar, you know? Right. But it, it's, right. you know, it's so when I got into production, I was like, you know what? I can definitely make this now, you know, right. because I have this image in my head right. and right. I can, you know, put on paper and let this, you know, beautiful shirt come to life, you know? Yeah, I remember when I, you know, because I would only see it on TV. Yeah, same here. shows like same here. Boardwalk you know? Empire There you go, there like you that. go, there you go. Yeah, 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 there you go. And when I got the yep. opportunity to, when I actually saw yeah, it yeah. in the store, yeah. um, I, was, I got two. Yeah, yeah, you have to, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got two. Yeah, so I was yeah. just like, man, yeah. I, I love those shoes. Yeah, oh I man, amazing. Cause, yeah, because my style is based on like, you know, old English classic, you know, like 1930s, right. you know, uh, double breasted, um, right. Hans II, you know, right. Glenn Platt. Um, just like, you know, so I, you know, once I saw that one time, like you said, on TV, like right. Boa Empire uh, and this other show on TV called. Uh, Peaky Blanker, uh, yeah, right, I, I don't right, know if, right. if I'm saying it right, but it's, it's Blinders, yeah, 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 Peaky yeah. Blinder, there you go. Beautiful show, beautiful style, you know, yes. and, uh, but yeah, and that was my inspiration right, right there. Oh yeah, no, for sure. It's just, that is when people ask me, like, how did my style cultivate? It was from watching TV as go. a kid and seeing like these shows yeah. with, with, with these men, yeah. like, Dressed up, and yeah. you know, I would always say, oh, "That's what I, yeah. you know, yeah. that's that's yeah. what I want like, to exactly. look like." Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I want to like look like. And I like worked in banking for yeah. a long time, looking like how yeah. I wanted to look. Yeah. But you know, kind of like my true calling yeah. was yeah. Out, outside Absolutely. of that. You know, people yeah. will always say, "What are you doing here? Yeah. You look like you should yeah, be man. like working in yeah. fashion." Yeah. But my mindset was, "But what type of job would I do?" Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. like. Yeah. 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 What type of job would I do? I was like, yeah. uh, it doesn't, for me, it was like, nah, I can't risk all of this good yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, oh uh, man, that's something, yo, bro, you have no <laughs> idea, man. Um, having a stable income and leaving that and just trying something new, it's one of the biggest, you know, um, adjustment that anybody right. have to do. Right. Because that idea of fear, you know, like, what if this, you know, what if, you know, it doesn't work? You know, what right. if, what if, you know, um, but yeah, man, my good friend, Mohammed, he's, uh, he's, uh, he working into finance as well. Right. Um, and same thing. And he was one of the guys that would always tell me, yo, Keith, man, I'm ready to like, you know, to leave this job right. and just put everything I have into this business, man. You right. know, and I'll often tell him like, yo, bro, it's going to happen. Like just take, you know, take our right. time, you know, cause I, for me, like I, 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 I like to do my research, you know, I, you know, when I, when I want to do something, I have to make sure that once it get done, it has to be right. Yes. You know, I don't want to yes. take any shortcut, anything yeah. like that, just because of me working in, in the fashion industry right. and having like that access to, uh, uh, you know, a uh, brand and having access to market and having right. access to like, you know, textile and stuff like that. Right. Um, so that just helped me 
um, to take that, you know, aspect of things that I can implement into my own business, right. you know, and just do it right. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's, that is how I am too. I'm just like, okay, if you're going to do something, yeah. you got to do it. You got to do it right. You got to do it right. You got to do it right. Yeah. But I also uh, understand as I get older yeah. that Sometimes everything can't be perfect. Oh, it's not at and all. It still got to move. There you go. No, no, absolutely. So you just have to find like that balance. Yeah. You know? No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, but I used to struggle with that a lot, especially when I first started the business. Yeah. A lot of just spinning, spinning yeah. the wheels. Yeah. Oh, but what if this? Yeah. No, yeah, man. I need to work on this yeah. more. Yeah. Oh, well, I need to have this yeah, to do. Man. And then it's like, no, yeah. just do it. Just start yeah. somewhere and just like go yeah. instead of because you can just talk yourself yeah. out of doing yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. By just saying, oh, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Yeah. But you have something and the way that you can like make it better is by the, to do it yeah. and then do it again yeah. and then do it again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um. So let's see. So so Ralph Lauren, yeah, right. So you do like some visuals. There. Yeah, yeah. Ralph, Ralph. Um, yeah, man. Ralph. Uh, like I don't like I don't even know where to start from, man. You know, right. talking about Ralph Lauren. Um, Ralph Lauren helped me to be who I am today at right. this moment. Um, the opportunity uh, when I left Saks. Um, you know, I took I took a break. I wasn't working for like a couple of years. Right. Uh, I went back home. Uh, you know, I went back home to Africa. You know, uh, you know, to visit my my grandma. Right. And uh, to see my uncle, my dad, uh, uh, oldest brother. Right. Uh, so I took some time off. Um, so when I came back, you know, I was like, okay, like, what's the next step for me? You right. know. Um, but uh, yeah, so I started work. Um, then this opportunity with Ralph um, came up as, as a consultant, right. right? As a menswear consultant. So I took the opportunity working there. Then with that, my passion for menswear and uh, create and visual, you know, started to kick in. Right. You know, and uh, my my general manager Sam Odom uh, gave me my first opportunity um, to do something within the store. Right. And that's how the opportunity came. And, and he's just like, you know what? We, we're not going to wait for visual team to come here two months later. Right. You know, we already did this presentation. I want you to do this. Right. You know? And I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah. Cause you know, visual man, like they don't, they don't want nobody touching their stuff. Right. And, you know, and so it got uh, to right. be right, man. So what I did was uh, every time visual would calm down, I will um, just look at them, you know, because I was very passionate about it. Right. That's and that's the thing. You have to have passion for oh, something, for sure. you know. Um, so I was very passionate about it. So I would, you know, every time they come down, I was look at them, look, you know, look at everything that they do and everything. Then I took some of the old Ralph Lauren catalog um, and product knowledge book, and right. took, took it home, and uh, and I just started to like, you know, study. You know, right. I started to read, started to study, study, study. You know about the classification of Ralph Lauren lifestyle. Right. Um, so yeah, so when I had an opportunity, I did the visual for the, the store, the entire men's store. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, man, and you know, the rest, you know, yeah. it's history. Well, what is that, what is that like though? You know, yeah. like, because Ralph, Ralph Lauren is such a iconic yeah. American yeah. brand, yeah. but globally Global, known, man, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. in the, in, 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 the clothes yeah. and the home stuff, yeah, yeah, just yeah. The, the whole yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. It's, right? it's a lifestyle. Of, of you know, it is like everyone yeah, knows yeah, it. Yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a lifestyle. Like I would listen to your uh, your last uh, talk show with uh, with with Nick, and he said the same thing. You know, because I think he has a history with Ralph Lauren as right. well. Um, and and he's right. You know, um, it's a lifestyle. Um, you know, uh, the idea. Ralph Lauren saw this idea and uh, and sell it to, to you know to the American people, right? You know, um, but not just about the clothes. You know, it's it's, it's an entire lifestyle, right? You know, um, for his 50th anniversary, um, the book that he came up with. If you open the first page, um, you know, when I opened the first page and I read just the first sentence yeah. of what he was saying, you know, as a kid from LeBronx, you know, not coming from money, you right. know, and stuff like that, starting a company or having a dream, you right. know, it's almost like an air, you know, passing by that you right. can't see. You see what I'm right. saying? So he never, even himself, he never thought that he could have been in, in this position today, right. you know, but, you know, just by um, understanding 
you know, taking an idea, you know, from the British, you know, and just bring, you know, implement into like the American lifestyle. Right. You know, same thing with Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers never elevated to that, you know, to that next level. Right. You know, so I, a part of me said that Ralph Lauren took something from them. Right. You know, and just make it better. Right. You know, so, right. um, but it yeah. It made it younger. It made it younger. There you yeah. go. It made it younger for every demographic. And that's, yeah. I often say that like this, the brand is pretty much the one brand that any, for any demographic you can go to and shop. Yep. You know, that's true. And, 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 you know, and, and, and that's it, man. And, and Ralph said, he's like, I don't do this for the clothes. You know, this is a lifestyle. Right. You, know, you wear my clothes. I want you to feel comfortable. I want, you know, even when I'm designing, I'm designing for that woman, you know, of, right. I'm designing for that man, you know, right. so it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. Oh yeah. No, the, it's, it's like this because people message me all the time and say, yeah, if you're looking for models, yeah. let me know. I'm yeah. like, no, yeah. I'm the model yeah. Yeah. and my clients yeah. are the yeah. model. Yeah. You know, yeah. I live it. Yeah, yeah. There you, you go. You know, yeah, like, because there's certain image you you want to see. It. There, there you go. Like, there you go. You know. There you go. Um, and for me doing that, yeah. people are like, yeah. I want it yeah. too, yeah. and it's the same thing yeah. because with the work that you do there, yeah. you are. It, you have to evoke oh. emotion. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. When people look at the stuff, yeah, 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 right? yeah absolutely. And, and it has yeah. to be like, ooh. Yeah. I want to yeah. look like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 um, one time I was in the middle of working on a mannequin, um, doing the entire outfit. And uh, once I, I got done, in two seconds, when I came back on the floor, this guy walked in. He said, I want everything on that mannequin. Right. You know, just right. like that, you know. Right. So, um, and, uh, and, and I'm like, oh, wow. So, you right. know, it's the idea, you know, of yeah. like, oh, I want to look like that guy right there, right. you know. So, um, yes, for me, I think it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Um, working in creative service and visual because we get to put things together. Right. You know, we get to create this beautiful environment that people can come and shop, you yeah. know, and see things, how things is supposed to be color pattern, you know, classification, you know, right. you know, just, you know, but it's, 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 we can sit here and talk about it all day, oh, man. for sure. You know, but yeah, sure. it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a great company to work for, you know, and I learned so much from their work in there. So the day I leave, I can take all that, you know, I, uh, uh, everything that I learned, implement yeah. that into my life, in, 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 into my own brand. Yeah. So what type of client comes to you for a made to measure suit? Yes. So um, I'm, I'm glad you 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 asked that question, because when we first started, one of the questions that we asked ourselves is like, you know, what is our client and what's and, and what's the price point that we want to put right. out there? You know, um, as first now we have getting better with production, right? And uh, and same thing, we have our Italian production, we have our uh, Chinese production, right? Okay, um, so and we do uh, made to measure, yeah. and we do uh, uh, hand hand tailor. That's the thing people have to understand. There's a difference between a bespoke and a hand tiller. Yes. Okay. So yep. exactly. So you have to understand. So we we do hand tailoring, yeah. Right. And we do bespoke. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So for us, when we first started was, you know, the idea was the everyday guy, right. you know, guy that just graduated college, you know, that got his first job, right. you know, that want to invest in a nice, you know, suit, right. but don't want to break the bank. Right. Um, so that's, that pretty much was the demographic that we was going after. But our client has been, you know, weddings. You know, right. Yeah. Right. Man, yeah, man. Um, our client has been weddings, um, you know, huge supporter of the brand. Uh, uh, some of my friends I got married with the past Three years, you know, right. they all came to me, and I truly appreciate that. You right. know, and I was able to fit every one of them. Um, the last wedding we did this, uh, this uh, I think uh, it was in June. That was by far one of our, our biggest uh, a wedding. You know, right. almost eleven guys, and uh, it was a lot of work, but you yeah. know, everything came out to be beautiful. You know, and my my cousin. He was getting married and he was very happy. Right. You know, we did a beautiful uh, dinner jacket, white dinner jacket, uh, pink right. lapel, double breasted. Right. You know, so it was it was it was very beautiful. Yeah, there's nothing like clothes that fit your yeah, body. Man, bro, you have no <laughs> idea, man. Like that feeling once you look at yourself in the mirror, you know, it just be like, okay, this is it. Yeah, you know, like for one of my favorite outfit from you this year was. That you know that white double breast that you oh, you had listen, on. Oh, I got I got that in the room right now. <laughs> oh man, you. Oh man, when I saw that, man, I was like, oh my god, man, yeah, you 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 definitely broke the internet with that look, man. Right, that, that but, look was but such the, a see, beautiful. But that is the good thing yeah. about um what you do yeah. and what I do yeah, and what yeah. all these other yeah. guys are yeah. doing. Yeah. You can appreciate yeah, yeah, someone yeah. else's there you go. stuff. If it's done right. If it's done right. There you yes. go. If yeah, it's yeah, done yeah, right, yeah. I would definitely give you your credit. Right, you know what I mean? Right, if it's right. done right, 
And uh, I would definitely give you your credit, man. I and when I look at that picture from your higher, you know, from the higher armhole, right. uh, from the slick shoulder, how everything just fit, it was like your <laughs> garment is like it moved according to your body. Right. So those are the kind of thing you know that I look for. Being right. you know working in this industry, you right. know, um, I'm around clothes every day, right. you know, and I study them, you know, right. and so those you know those are the kind of little detail that I look for. You know, right. your button placement, right. you know, how many inches from your from the top of your shoulder, you know, right. to your uh, to your stomach, you know. So it just just a little. Key. Facts, those all those things that I look for, man. You know, since I started, you know, doing the like custom suiting, mm -hmm. the the part of it that I really love is seeing and touching the fabrics. Yeah, yeah man. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Like I know sometimes yeah, people like the yeah. clients look at me crazy because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 Feel yeah, this. Yeah, like, yeah. look at this. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there are some beautiful, beautiful yeah. fabrics. Yeah. Um, I got the opportunity to spend some time with David Lance. Yeah. So David Lance is yeah, really big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he showed me yeah. this $20,000 Vicuna uh, coat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this yeah, feel man. like I, it's funny I, I don't yeah. know if I would pay $20,000 yeah, yeah, for yeah, a coat, yeah, yeah. but this feels yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, when I when I used to consult for Ralph as uh, as one of the menswear consultant and uh, some of some of the most beautiful fabric, uh, you know, anything above, let's say super one sixty one seventy thread count, when you come down to like that higher cashmere and right. silk blend, right. right? So for anybody who listening, so cashmere and silk blend, um, it has to be bespoke because machine cannot go through them because they are so soft, right? Right. So you have to have money to actually own that. Okay, right. exactly. Right. So it's, it's not an everyday suit. Pretty much is a fabric that you're probably going to wear like maybe two times a year. Right. If you know? even. Even. Exactly. Right. You know, um, so we had a huge client, you know, a multimillionaire came and bought two and the fabric was going for 15 grand each. Right. right. You know, so it's, you know, that was the first time I actually felt, you know, super 200, you know, right. cashman and silk blank. Oh. Yeah, man. I don't Bro. think I've ever felt oh, a man. super 200. Definitely oh, man. 180. It's, yeah, oh, man. It's yes. like butter. It's like your, your hand just go right in it. Right. You know, uh, it's beautiful. You definitely, that is definitely something that someone that has money oh, yeah. would buy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Not, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. Nah, 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 oh, yeah. You know? yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I would never invest in, 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 in a super 200 right now. You right. know, that's, right. um, you know, but yeah, that's until you already have all your classification covered. You know, you have about maybe 200 suits. Right. You know, right. <laughs> you know it's like, okay, right. let me just get one 200 fabric exactly. and just have it in the closet, you know? Yeah, but no, I love the fabrics and he showed me some yeah. really, really yeah. beautiful, yeah. like expensive yeah. Yeah. fabrics. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. people, I, I just, people don't have yeah. no clue. Yeah, they have no idea, man. Um, like, you know, one, what, what really goes into doing bespoke yeah. right a yeah. lot of times people don't even know yeah, what it yeah, means. yeah exactly you know right yeah. um it, it, and it, it to me that's the most beautiful, beautiful thing about it yeah. you know yeah. like when i lived in hong kong yeah. i got the opportunity yeah. Yeah. to get yeah. bespoke yeah exactly suits. because that's one of the big they have one of the biggest uh uh production uh uh in in in, in hong kong you right. know uh, 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 of like you know for that market right. and uh yeah, so how 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 was the process for you in in in, in Hong Kong? Oh man, how many so, fit in did you uh did you uh, have? So about four. Okay, that's yeah, about right. So yeah, so yeah. it was just like, and that was my my first exposure to yeah. it. Yeah. And once I yeah. got the yeah. exposure yeah. Like, to it, right, it was this like, is it. oh man, yeah, yeah. This is I'm it. not wearing a regular suit no more. This is yeah. it right yeah. here. Yeah. Um, but you know, here, I mean, in New York, mm. to get a bespoke yeah. suit. Oh man, uh, yeah, you gotta break the bank. It's yeah, yeah. it's gonna be serious, yeah. serious yeah. money. Yeah. Um, but it, that suit is yeah. truly yeah. Your, your your suit, exactly yeah. made for you, your body type, and you know, however you look, that's how it's gonna come back. Right. You know, that's the beauty of bespoke. Yeah. You know, which is a big difference from made to measure. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's what I like explain to yeah. to clients when they come yeah. to me. Yeah. Right, yeah. like it's I take your measurements, yeah. right? You pick the fabric, yeah. Yeah. give them the measurements, yeah. Yeah. here comes the suit, suit. back, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And it might have to be some <laughs> the alteration, yeah, yeah, because it. it's made to measure, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, but you know, yeah. it's definitely not like a bespoke yeah. where you go and yeah. you see the tailor yeah. four times yeah. Yeah. as they fit yeah. it onto exactly. your body, you know, you know. um, to your specifications. Yeah. Yeah. So, to me, that is just 
I feel like everyone needs to experience it. Oh, absolutely. You know? Some people will never. Yeah. So let me ask you this, mm -hmm. right? Do you feel like the, you know, the DAPA guy is kind of like here to stay? Or do you think that eventually, because you know, in the corporate sector, a lot of companies are going much more casual. Yeah. Right, just the shirt in the tech in the in tech the, industry, though. Yes, for sure. Yeah, very very casual. Yeah, yeah, people yeah, are yeah. not dressed. The next up, generation, right? Yep. So p sometimes people come to me. They say, yeah. "Well, I don't need a suit. Yeah, yeah. I just need the jacket." Yeah, yeah. That's right? something we're struggling with right pants. now. Yeah. You know. So, do you think that men's suiting is going to be around for? Like for for many more years to come. I, I think so. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, I I think so. And because uh, I saw that transition, even for me from high school to um, you know to to wearing like my first H and M you know suit. Right. You know, because once that transition came out, you know, everybody. Because I came from from a country that we we was already wearing you know tailor clothing right you know because right. we we wore your uniform to go to school right you know so your uniform has to be tailored right you know so when i came here in order for me to fit in so you know i, I went back to like you know like that baggy ass that baggy clothes because i went to a school that you don't have to wear a uniform to go to school right you know so um so yeah man but i i think that's something that uh we came and met that here you know, right. and that's something we're, you know, we're going to leave here. And that's something that would never, ever go out of style. Oh, yeah. you know, even though right now with the trend, with the trend of, you know, luxury streetwear and stuff like that. But, you know, with the next generation of like, you know, like the tech uh, sector, like, you know, God just wearing whatever they want to wear to go to right. work and stuff like that. But I think, um, you know, suiting would never go out of style because there's just something about, you know, men wearing a suit oh, and, you know, sure. and women wearing a suit. It just, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? No, people say it all the time. They're like. There's nothing yeah. like seeing Bro, someone you, you have no idea you know, man. in in a in a suit. But you know, a lot of a lot of people are like, you know, it's it's, it's kind of done. But I don't think nah, so. I nah, think that nah, 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 not the, at all. the suit will yeah. not go away. Yeah. It, the 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 styles yeah. and shapes yeah. may yeah. change. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, absolutely. For every decade, you know, right. that like like that's happened. Right. But the, the the suit itself yeah. is not gonna go away. Absolutely. I want to talk to you about because I think what goes hand in hand with your clothes is how you take care of yeah. like your skin and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. what is some of your, your grooming, you know? Yeah. Uh, funny regimen? thing you asked that question because uh, people always ask me, Oh, like, like what do you use for your face and stuff you like that? You got that good African Yo, skin. Yo man, bro. I'm telling you, man, nothing. <laughs> you know, if you're listening right now, yo, I, I get so many questions, man. Um, DM, you know, like, especially if I post a picture with just a headshot, anything right, like that. Right. Oh man, like, what do you do? What, you know, like, like, what do you use for your skin? I was like, right. nothing, man. Just, right. you know, cocoa butter, you know, and, right. and, and, and that, like, that's it, man. Right. You know, uh, genetically, you know, I guess I was blessed, you know, right. but yeah, I, you know, but, um, excuse me, but, um, but yeah, um, in, in a sense of like, just taking care of my clothes. I mean, you you can relate to this. We spend a lot of money on dry clean, uh -huh. you know, and I think you you actually did a tutorial about, you know, how to minimize that. Right. You know, right. and I think that was that was very beautiful as well. Yeah. You know, as a man of style, you have to have a steamer in your house. Yes. It would save you so much money. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm yeah. saying? Um, even, you know, when, when you go out, you know, before you put your clothes back in the closet, just let it hang out for a little right. and let it dry out. Right. You know, and uh, and for me, like, uh, even with my denim and stuff, like, like I would dry clean my denim, like, maybe probably like two times a year. I mean, maybe once a year. Right. You know, and right. same thing with my suits and stuff like right. that. Right. You know, but yeah, you know, just, you know, little, knowing like those little aspects of things, you know, having, you know, a, a steamer. Right. Um, like even just hanging it up in the bathroom and, and turning like, you know, like the hot water the pump water on line. and, you yeah. know, just little stuff like that. And that will save you a little bit of money, you know, of dry cleaning your, your stuff, you know, every month. Right. Yeah. That's to me, the care of the clothes is so important. It, it's very important, man. And especially when you've invested yeah, yeah, in the clothes, yeah. you know, because yeah. it is an investment. It right? is. And I always tell, tell people, mm -hmm. if you go for timeless classic yep. pieces, yeah. you always be yeah. in style. Yeah, that's it. And if you take care Remember of it. them. You, you that's will, it. always you have always it. look good. Yeah. yeah, you always look good. Yeah. And, and so I'm always all about the care yeah. of my clothes. Yeah. I've always yeah. been that way. Yeah. The care yeah. of same here, shoes man. and same, all, same all here. those things. I, I like same, cringe. Same, same, what's, same. what's one of the things that like 
really makes you cringe that you see guys doing in terms of clothing? Oh man, um, there's so much. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the thing is that um, that when I see guys driving with their suit jacket on, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's creep my skin, man. Um, yeah, um, driving with your suit jacket on, especially wearing a light wool, even a linen, you know, right. that just, you know, I, you, you should never do that. Right. You know, always hang your suit in the back of the car seat, you know, right. and uh, when you get down, put your suit on, you know, especially if you're right. going for a business meeting and stuff like right. that. Right, or well, even um, sitting in a, in a chair. In a chair. And and they, 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 like, they, lean they, back. They, they, there you go, I'm you know, like, yeah, what man. The hell are you, you know, doing? yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just, it, even for shoes, like, you know, um, guys that, um, and funny thing you said that, that, you know, you can look so sharp and everything, and when you look down, you know, the shoes is all beat up, right. you know. Right. And uh, one time I posted a video getting a shoe shine. And a friend of mine commented, he was like, oh, that's a lost art. I was like, yes, because, yeah. you know, not not a lot of guys know that. Right. For me, coming from Africa, that's something we grew up doing. Right. Is what I'm saying, right. because we would wear a uniform to go to school. And before we go to school, we have inspection. Right. You know, so we would stop in the city, you know, because so many multiple, like, shoe shine guys. Right. Stand there, get the shoe shine, then before going to class. Right. You know, so that's something, you know, we grew up on. Then when I came here, it changed a little bit because, you know, we started wearing colors. Uh, just street, uh, street clothes to go to school. Right. You know, but yeah, man, um, that's something at least I try whenever I'm in New York, you know, if I'm wearing a suit, I always stop and uh, and, and get a shoe shine. Yeah, I worked with this, um, this company that has an app. So what they do is they, you know, you put in your information, mm -hmm. they come pick up the shoes. Oh, wow. They take them. They they shine them in clean oh, the inside wow. and oh, out. Oh wow! Yeah. Right? After today's, you gotta you gotta definitely give me that information. Right. And then they then they deliver it back to oh, you. Oh wow! That's that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really good oh, service man. for the man who is oh man, you know, that's working amazing. All day or can't get yeah, to man. the shoe that's, shine. That's you that's, know that's, to just open your door, give them the that's, shoes, that's offer amazing. Them to come to your office. So I thought that that was a really, oh, really man. clever that's, 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 idea. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, oh, it man. is. Because I remember growing up, like, you know, on the weekend, like I would bring all my shoes out, like, especially on a Saturday, right. and just stay there and just shine everything and leave right. everything out in the sun, you know? But since I moved here, I don't remember the last time I did that, man. Right. You know, because no time, you know? Yeah, man. Um, right. So, yeah, so, yeah, I remember, you know, back home every Saturday, I'll bring out my shoes, sneakers, right. you know, loafers, you know, everything, you know, just shine everything out um, and just leave it out in the sun, you know, right. let the sun beat it up a little bit, take right. that smell out and uh, and bring it back in the house, you know. Right, yeah. right. And have all shine shoes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, definitely people, you know, don't really shine shoes Yeah, anymore. Yeah, man, it's... it's uh, um, what, what else don't they really do anymore? Shoe shoe shine to me is is probably like the biggest. It's, one. It, it is the biggest one. Um, and another thing too that really I, I I notice a lot, you know, and guys not knowing the right measurement for the dress. I mean the dress shirt, the next the size. Next size. You know, right. another thing that creeped my skin. You know, it's like the suit can be so beautiful on you, but the neck you have, you can fit pretty much your full fingers. You know, okay. and yeah, man, it just, you know, that's another thing too, man. You know, you have to know those little things, you know, know your neck size. When you're buying a shirt, you know, right. know the perfect length, you know, from uh, uh from, from from your race, you know, to the jacket, to, right. to the end of the jacket, you know, and even, you know, it's because if you don't do those kind of things, you know, tying the necktie would definitely expose that. You know, you clearly see right. that, the, the, you know, the, uh, the neck, you know, of the shirt is too big for you. Right. You know, so it, it just, you know, just paying attention to those little details and stuff like that, it would take your style to a whole different level. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, there are definitely people who are, you know, taking the information and applying it. Yeah. You know, other people, they yeah. just like- Yeah, 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 they just don't care. Why, yeah, yeah, like why yeah. is this, yeah. um, you know, why is it yeah. important? Yeah. It is. Yeah, it is important. Yeah. Man. Your your appearance is yeah. is important. Yeah, yeah. image is everything. Yeah, you know? it is. And you know when you when you dress good and when you like look good, people yeah. take you yeah. more serious. Absolutely. You Ab know you, they're more likely right. to listen. Happen to me all the time. Right. Yeah. Right. They're no. more likely to listen, listen to you. Yeah. yeah. When when you like looking good. Mm. Um. So let me see. Let me see. So. Three things that are your must-haves, right? Three either accessories or three pieces that are things that you just three. absolutely 
have to have as as a, as a man of style. Yes. Um, yeah, that's you that's, personally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. for me personally, yeah, um, yeah um, definitely a classic. You know, navy blue double breasted suit. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, I'm just you know. Um, yeah, that, go ahead. Is, yeah, so what I was gonna say is one, yeah. everybody can pull off. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you yeah. have to so, have yeah, there you a go. certain there you go. body that, you know, type. The height, you know, you have off. to have the height. You know, yeah. uh, very long torso. You know, yeah. that's you know, that's a key factor. Um, but guys like us, you know, right. luckily for us, you know, you know, we read above that six feet. You know, you right. know, so. Um, but yeah. yeah, definitely, it's not it's not for everybody. Right. But I just feel like it's a classic look. Um, and for our generation now, we have you know pretty much transitioned like that style. You know, back right. then, you know, guys was doing you know the the, the full buttons, right. you know, but just lower. You know, right. but now we we're doing um, the six button, right? But button, you know, the uh, the middle button, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. Um, yeah, so definitely that. And for me, I'm I'm a huge fan of a classic. Um, tassel loafer a brown you know yes. like a cognac brown mm -hmm. um because that's something you can wear with suit and that's something you can wear with ch chinos something you can wear with jeans and right. stuff you know so you can dress it on and then dress it up right you know and my next would be uh, a clean um a navy blue blazer you right. know so for the double breast it, it can either be navy or be gray right right N you know not black you know the only time you invest in a black suit unless you already have all your classic covered then, right you know then right. black you know, you'd be like, okay, I already have it. I have my gray, I have my navy, you know. So now let me do, you know, blacks that I can use for black tie or right. I can use separately as well, you know, as for a business meeting as, you know, something like that. Right. But yeah, so those would be like my three things, you know, a, a navy uh, gray double breasted suit, uh, tassel loafers, and a classic, um, uh, either a Glen plaid blue or Glen plaid gray right. blazer that you can wear with jeans, you know, throughout the weekend. Right, right. That's a good one. We could probably talk. Oh, I can give you ten. Whole, oh the man, whole time. Bro. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we got to keep the the podcast yeah, within yeah. a certain amount of time. Absolutely. So, at this point, I want you to tell the listeners yeah. where they can find you. Um. So, I mean, of course, social media. Um, Akif Sharif is my name. Um, so you can find me on any platform. You know, uh, as Akif Sharif. Yeah. As for our brand, um, it's Mokif. It's M O K I E F. Yeah. Um, you know, Mokif made to measure. Same thing on social media, on Facebook, and uh, our platform that we use to transition into like the whole made to measure aspect is Elegant Men Style. That's how we got started. You know, um, right. we started a fashion blog for men's like us. Right. You know, to um, to relate. You know, right. um, that's how we started. You know, giving information to young guys. Um, so elegant men style. Um, going through some transition right now, but that's something we're gonna get back on and to be more consistent. Right. Um, but yeah, so those three platforms. You know, and you can reach out to me, and uh, you know, and I and I reach back. Right, get you a suit. Yeah, man, get you a made to measure it, suit, man. You don't even yeah. have to just be for a wedding. Yeah, you know, just you know, hit me <laughs> up, man. You know, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Keith, uh, you know, again, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I am really glad that we were able to connect yeah. and, and and make this happen. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> I wish you much, much, much success. Likewise, in man. Everything. Likewise, that you're man. Doing, from the bottom of my heart. Likewise. You know, and I look forward to much more yeah. from you. Likewise. Um, so my people, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the My People Podcast. Show us some love and subscribe to our show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on Instagram at the My People Podcast or by email at the My People Podcast at gmail.com. So again, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your listening platform. It's the wealthy guy, and I'll see you soon.